Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation with Tom Merritt and Leo Laporte. Episode 58, recorded June 20th, 2012. Doc Searles. Triangulation is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it, right from your desk. For this special offer, go to Stamps.com, click the radio microphone, and use the offer code TRIANGULATION. And by... Go to Assist from Citrix. Take control of your IT world from one simple cloud-based platform. Provide live or unattended support to all your users anywhere. Sign up for your 30-day free trial today at gotoassist.com. Use the promo code TRIANGULATION. And by Ford. Featuring the My Ford Mobile smartphone app for electric vehicles. The My Ford Mobile app makes the electric driving experience fun and efficient. Learn more about Ford electric vehicle technologies at Ford.com slash technology. It's time for Triangulation, the show in which we interview the most interesting, the smartest, the most challenging, uh, sometimes, uh, celebrities and thinkers uh, in the technology world, and it's always a great pleasure. Tom Merritt has the day off, but I have Ozzy, so um, (laughs) Ozzy makes it a a triangulation today. (laughs) And one of my favorite people in with us, it's Dr. Dave. Hey, Dr. Oh, wow. Dave. <laughs> well, that goes way back. Doc That's where Doc Searles. came from. Yeah, yeah, that was in college radio. It was radio out of college. I was already out. It was a station at Duke University. Duke had a, had a commercial station. Back then, a lot of universities had commercial stations. And Duke had one, and we were small, and we couldn't sell much advertising. And so we made up. Ads and things, and and I, and it was the bicentennial. Wait a minute! If yeah. you don't have ads, that's a blessing. You made oh, up. Oh no, no, ads. no! We, we, that, that's how we went out of business. Pretty much, we're not <laughs> real, so ads. we're going to make up ads. Yeah, yeah, right. So I made up ads I for, for things that didn't exist, and, and that actually got you in trouble. No, it didn't get me in trouble. It just got me a nickname, Doctor Dave, because because a lot of them I did as Doctor Dave, uh-huh. a name somebody else gave me. Uh, no uh-huh. doctorate involved. No anything it's like it's like the dwarf or the a gunslinger Doc, or a sleepy. gambler yeah. or something like Doc that holiday yeah yeah i was sleepy in junior high school I, in my junior high school yearbook it says sleepy and so it's you've crossed been two out because i'm the seven i i'm two out of seven have you so done far. grumpy uh... i've been grumpy <laughs> and i've very much been sneezy as well <laughs> but who's left i don't remember i don't know <laughs> that's a, always a just challenge. not snow white I don't, I, she never shows up i've talked to the other dwarfs so i don't know what happened to her so uh, it's i always love talking to doc because first of all we have this kind of love of uh, radio that yeah. we get, uh, both of us djs and radio personalities so but you don't do that anymore. Oh, I did it. Uh, no, not not really. No. Just to, just as stuff like this. Yeah. You know? Well, we just love to show up. It. It's like the athlete's foot, though. You never quite get rid of it. It's just <laughs> <laughs> there's there must be a salve for it somewhere, <laughs> something to fix this up. Yeah. Best known uh, as one of uh, what three or four authors of the four. Clue Train. Four. Uh, the Clue Train Manifesto. Eleven years now, almost twelve. Uh, tw- well, twelve since we wrote it. We wrote 2000. it. We wrote the the website in spring of 99 um and then the website was went so wild that um we got a book offer we wrote it that summer oh, so the website predated the book yep interesting the website was like march april i think and then um the book we wrote that summer and it came out in january of 2000 just in time to cause the crash chris Locke, david weinberger rick levine and you right and it is it's kind of there it is. You probably meant it. A legacy site. Some of those languages there are not real. They're it just is, all faked it, up. No. <laughs> no. Are you I'm, kidding me? I'm kidding. No. No. Actually, volunteers did all of those. The long tail did all of the translations. Of this the, is of this the site thing. has been declared a read-only landmark. It doesn't change anymore. Yeah, except we put in the in 2009 or put a little plug 10, in. Whenever the that that top um, one on the left there is the uh, the the tenth anniversary edition, which was not exactly on the 10th. It was a little earlier, late, right. I forget which, and uh, had three additional chapters by new people, uh, Jake McKee, J.P. Rangaswamy, and uh, Dan Gilmore. Great, Plus some all new, great people. new ones from the four of us. So, I mean, I, I was so Im- impressed and, uh, and excited about the Clue Train manifesto that I, you know, I, I actually bought, I think, a dozen copies to give management at Tech TV in uh, 2000 or 2001, wow. hoping... 
that they would understand. <laughs> and it didn't. And the tech TV went away. <laughs> uh, but it may be a guest on a couple of shows there. I think actually. maybe that we yeah. helped. I don't know. Uh, I guess if you read the site, pe- first of all, people of Earth. Come on. That's a little grandiose. <laughs> that's, Chris, that's Chris Locke, I'm pretty sure. People of <laughs> Earth. Here, David Weinberger. We are speaking <laughs> to you. But, this, but, the, but it's kind of encompassed here. A powerful global... And remember, this is... A long time ago. It's 1999, right? Yeah, and we actually started in 98. So, so the if, internet's it, around, but it's a few years old. But, but if, you, if you start, if you date the birth of the net, which, which I do from the first graphical browsers. Netscape. From Netscape yeah, and then Microsoft. Right. You're really talking since 95. The yeah. middle of 95. That's when I start to. Yeah. Of course, the internet predates it. Even the World Wide Web predates right. it. But people didn't use it until around No, 95. but that's when the ISPs started to right. roam the earth. And, right. and we had dial-up, at least. And, right. and, um, and we had real email. We didn't have... You know, you could get, you know, Laporte.com. You could have domain if names. If only and, I had. I know, yeah. It's I deeply regret not yeah. getting Laporte.com. A powerful global conversation has begun. Through the Internet, people are discovering and inventing new ways to share relevant knowledge with blinding speed. This is fairly prescient. I mean, yeah. it, it was becoming obvious, but you were... It's obvious now, and people will go, well, of course... As a direct result, marketers are getting smarter. You yeah, were wrong on that, but okay, we'll talk no, about it. No, we were, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Market, well, we said markets are getting smarter. Markets are getting markets smarter. Markets are, we're getting smarter. Marketers, yeah. unfortunately, are not. Yeah. Looking, but yeah, actually, you say that, and are getting smarter faster yeah. than most companies. Yeah. Are you disappointed, here we are 12 years later, that so little clue has been gotten? Well, actually, if you bring that back up again and scroll down um, a little bit, okay, keep going. By the way, the, the markets are conversations is the premise. That of all was, of this. yeah. So I'll, there's we, the roadkill. Yeah, there's the roadkill. <laughs> we never found out who they really came from. We tried real hard, never uh, found it. That's so funny um, that somebody painted so pre- over the possum. <laughs> <I know. laughs> or an armadillo or whatever, whatever it was. that is. Um, but keep going uh, a little farther. There, okay. Now, if, and actually, if you go down a little farther, you'll see where the 95 theses start. And the first one is. There we go, 95 theses. So these and are the... the say, markets of conversation, that was my line. It may be my only line out of the 95, many of which, frankly, are, pack, are packing material. But if you go back up... Markets of conversations is it. Yeah, it, 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 it's it. it because it, what it says is, hey, marketers, it's not a monologue. It's not you selling yeah. us stuff with advertising. Guess what? The consumers are going to talk back. Right. And you better be ready to have a conversation as opposed to dial a monologuing. So, so here's what happens. So go back up to that because I wanted to show you that. Yeah. So go down again a little. See, this is so easy. Where it says if you if you have one clue to get this year, this is one to get. We are not seats or eyeballs or end users or consumers. We are human beings, oh. and our reach exceeds your grasp. Our reach exceeds your, your grasp. grasp. Deal with it. And Chris Locke wrote that, and that's a little graphic that he sent out. To Dave, David Weinberger, Rick Levine, and I—that is what, for me anyway, galvanized the four of us, to, to, and it adrenalized us to do the rest mm. of this. Mm. Now, here's the interesting thing about that: our reach doesn't exceed their grasp; it still doesn't, and Too that's bad. what's motivated me ever since. Yeah. And, and what um, do you mean by that? what did he mean? Okay, by that? so well, let me go back a little further. So, so it was actually on Tech TV uh, after a panel with. Uh, Jacob Nielsen mm-hmm. and and uh, was on the screensavers, yeah, and John. Dvorak, mm-hmm. and I think it was John Seely Brown. I forget mm-hmm. who else it was. But afterwards, um, Jacob and I went across the street, and he said, you know why you guys succeeded with this thing? He said, you, you spoke in, this, in the first-person voice as customers and right. as people and we. not as marketers. So when, he said, what happened is you guys were marketers who defected from marketing <laughs> and sided with markets against marketing, and that resonated with people. Yeah. And, and, and what we did was we tried to say what we knew to be true and would resonate with people. We were sure other people understood the same thing, right. which they did. But what, what that thing, that, that, that one statement by Chris declared was a state that didn't exist yet. And the reason, the, the, the reason, our, the, the way our, to answer your question, the way our reach does not exceed their grasp is, for example, right now, we are being, as we talked about the other day, we're being followed all the time. You can't go to a commercial website and not leave with with cookies sticking to you like ticks when you just came out of the woods, right? And they're hard to get rid of, or, or the, the prophylaxis for keeping them away is difficult and complicated and geeks only. So, so that's grasp, and our reach has not exceeded so far that we can stop that as a matter of course, or so far that it would be unthinkable for them, for the, for the sellers of the world, 
to do the kinds of things they're doing. Because if in the in the everyday world, nobody would come up to you, put your hand in your pocket, and say, "I'm just I'm going to be with you for a little while, but I don't want to know who you are. I don't need to know your name. I, I'm just I'm here for your own good. I'm going to give you advertising that will help you as you walk through the world. I got these other guys. I'm auctioning your data to in the back room here. But it's and, okay, and they're going to give you better guesswork about what you might want, right? But what is so yeah. okay? So just, what is so wrong with that's that? That's grasp. That's all. Yeah, grasp. they're grasping. That's but all the, what's grasp. so wrong with that? They just want to give us the ads that we want to see, right? No. No? No. Do you what want is, to see those ads? We established this well, the other no, day. Well, wait a minute. But nobody wants yeah. to see any ads. I mean, let's, I, okay, let's yeah. face that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ads are a necessary evil in the sense that nobody wants ads. And I think that's what everybody's well, well, really well, I, saying is, not, not don't track me. I just don't want to see any ads at all. So it, it, it's important, but probably a long digression to go into what kind of ads people do want to see and don't want to see. So Don't they want to see ads that are relevant? Yes. But, but there, there's a whole class of advertising, like... What you see in in Vogue and Vanity Fair and beautiful even fashion the, ads, beautiful Calvin fashion Klein. ads. There are people who will who, for whom that's editorial, or it is, or like in Linux Journal, which I write for. Right. There are lots of geek ads in there for right. geek stuff, and people like to see that. It's like a catalog. It's like a catalog. So, so that kind of ad, that's regular advertising. What we get when we go to Facebook or Google or to a blog, and and there's a bunch of advertising, or Huffington Post, or the New York Times, and a bunch of stuff for. We weren't looking for that. We can ignore it, but we weren't looking for that. Um, especially the more personalized it gets, the, the creepier it gets. There is a creepy factor. There's a creepy factor. And it's not really advertising in the traditional sense. I think it's a but different the, the, breed. The difference there is that Linux Journal, is a, as, as we are, is a targeted medium. We, right. we are, it's kind of flipped it on its head. Instead of its general media trying to figure out what the general audience is interested in. We're specific media, so we know what the audience is interested in. And so right. we run content and ads that are for that audience. Right. That's what we do. Yeah. And I agree. I, that's, there's something more seemly about that. Yeah. But how does general media solve that? How does Gmail, which is a wonderful service, free, yeah. how does Google monetize that in a way that is not creepy, not offensive, but, we, but they don't know anything about us because yeah. it's not targeted? Well, I don't know. And I also don't care a whole lot. <laughs> Not my problem I, is what you're saying. Well, it, it, it's just that I think there are other solutions, other ways they can make money that are more interesting than that. And, and there's, there's also, I mean, a fun thing for me to watch my son and his buddy. He's in Boston. Buddy's in California. They're both on Skype talking to each other live with, with looking at each other's faces, right? At the same time as they're Gmailing to each other with weird combinations of words to see what kind of ads they get. <laughs> this, the, 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 they're gaming it. They're gaming it. And, and, and this, is, this is like what's called a whiskey and diapers game. Have you heard about whiskey no. and diapers? Maybe the back channel can look up whiskey and diapers. I think there are these guys that... I think the chat they, room could they, probably find they, it faster than we what, could. The, the idea is that you, you have your loyalty card, you go into a store, and all you ever buy are whiskey and diapers. <laughs> Just to see what Just happens. to confuse the hell Just out of them. Just to confuse the algorithm, whatever that Wait is. Wait a minute, is he a drunk yeah. or a father? <laughs> yeah, right. uh, so, but, okay, um, do you use Gmail? Uh, I use it to filter spam, but I don't so go So you're a freeloader? Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah you don't well, have a problem with They that? want me to load, so it's okay. Well, they're <laughs> offering it to you for free. But, yeah. but so that's the thing. But I, if I didn't use that, I'd, I'd use something else, you know? I mean, well, to me, if you use the web, you're... You're freeloading yeah. in the sense that most of the content on the web, whether it's Huffington Post or Gmail, is yeah. free, but provided with this kind of implicit trade. I'm going to give you free stuff, as we do on this show, and you'll listen to our ads. So I'm going to make a prediction, which it just came to me now, um, looking at your fabulous decor. The, 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 this, 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 this wonderful roadie. Yeah, who the hell pays for this? Head. Yeah, exactly. It ain't the California you're you're raisins, I'll tell you that. Sponsors. But But here's a prediction that in... in in some number of years, I'm, I'm guessing few, Google will have a freemium model for search. Because Where you to. will pay not, not to, to have ads. Not, not just to, not to have ads, but not to have the SEO crap that not you don't want to see. Not Yeah. Yeah. Where, where it's not, not, not oh, even not the tracked. results. You don't want to see. I, I want pure organic results of, of things that are not necessarily I'd pay commercial. for that. Wouldn't you pay for that? Yeah, exactly. That. I think there's money in that. So that's a better way to make money, you're saying. It's, it's another way to make money. I'm not sure. You know, it's, I mean, I think that it, here is a. I think this is more fact than theory. The internet we know, as we just established from 1995, is 17 years old. As businesses go, that's real young. That's, oh, yeah. that's early. We are really early oh, yeah. in whatever this is going to be. It, it fascinates me that, 
the media, all media other than us, of course, um, <laughs> are think that Facebook is like the end of times. So we're done. It's Facebook is, owns everything yeah. now. We're all done. Yeah, we're, we know different because we've been around and we've seen them we've come seen, and we've seen them go. We've, we've seen these trees come up and fall over yeah. like, like like an annual plant. Yeah. Comes up and, oh, yeah. That bubble's done. <laughs> <laughs> Goes yeah. over, you know, and then the little spores kick out and the difference is the species change and new ones grow up and they last two years. And it's and the same thing down. over and over, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, so we have a f- so it's good. That's a good thing. Well, you had, but uh, again, you had a very, I think, uh, great insight at, at day one of the internet, which is that the internet was going to change the relationship between businesses and their customers. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And um, what what is what is the new? By the way, could somebody bring me my commercials? I left them over on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got a paper. I, this I thing. feel the need for a commercial. I don't know. <laughs> I just feel the need, but. I, so yeah, what is it's like what a pulse? Is, you have this. You have a commercial <laughs> pulse. And <laughs> well, how would you characterize the pre-internet relationship between businesses and consumers? It's changed actually. Well, hasn't they're, it? they're over time. I'm think of the there's the pre-internet Sears catalog. Yeah, which ha- the relationship there was. Well, we sell this stuff. Here's what it does. You want it? Mm-hmm. It was very straightforward. Right. Right. It wasn't. And it covered that. a lot. You could buy a house. You could actually yeah. buy a house. You would build a kit for a house. But then there were uh, Sears houses. A- along comes. Uh, Sigmund Freud and his and his nephew, and uh, which I can't remember his name, and uh, suddenly they realize if you tell somebody they have bad breath, they'll be more likely to buy your product mm-hmm. than if you just say, "Hey, we'll get rid of bad breath." Yeah. And so we went through this era where there was a coercive element. Right. Well, we we what happened? There was almost an adversarial what, relationship. What, what happened was that industry won the industrial revolution in the in the eighteen right. in the eighteen mid eighteen hundreds, and right. a lot of good things came out of it. You think. You know, mass marketing and mass distribution and, and mass selling, um, uh, th- that kind of asymmetry was all a good thing, and I think it was partially a good thing. Um, that was fine. It wasn't the, that was not an end state either. No. That was, um, uh, th- that gave us things like um, uh, mass, uh, what, what are called adhesive contracts, like we, like we sign all the time without reading, because it's the only way that one company can deal with many at once, right? But it totally violated the concept of freedom of contract, which is anybody can make an agreement with anybody else. And those are totally coercive, and they, are, they give you no rights whatsoever. Things it's like a shrink-wrapped license on a the, Yeah, right. And, and, and that, was, that was normative for 150 years, right? It I solved th- a problem. It solved a problem. We didn't have a better way. But, but what happened with the, with, with the Internet, the, in, we, the Internet and the web and the commercial web are actually three different things. The, the Internet is, this, is, is pro, defined by the... TCPIP, the, the base protocol, is an end-to-end system where any end can communicate with any other end as if there was zero distance in the middle. It's, and it's the, remarkable. The, the distance wants to be zero, right. and the cost also wants to be zero because it has no business model. It didn't go into it saying, I need to pay for this. No, it's just a protocol. It's like shaking hands. Shaking hands, there's not a, a charge for shaking hands. It's a, it's a single, similar, sim, simple thing. But then the web was also similarly... Well, any, any two documents could be connected, and other people, we can, I can point to that document, he can point to that document, we can edit them together maybe, but it was basically a way to hyperlink documents. It was a very simple way to hyperlink documents. What happened in 1995 was that we, in, that Netscape and Microsoft invented the first commercial web servers. And, the, and what happened is we... And, Lumontor- and the NSF said, you can now have commercial traffic on, That's our, right. on our pure exactly. net. And, and that soon, was a huge change. That was enormous, and that was really big. The and National Science yeah. Foundation, which funded the, yeah. f- the basic research at DARPA and all, prohibited commercial mm-hmm. traffic recently. Yeah. It was only 15 years ago, maybe a little bit more. I can't remember no, what it, it was. No, it was in 95. 20 years ago? I 95? I think I'm pretty sure it was 95. 17 years ago yeah. that they yeah. said, oh, okay, now you could transmit commercial. Right, and, con- then, it, and then, it, then it began to explode. Changed but, everything. But, but what happened is that the, the, the client server as an architecture became... The default, and what happened with client server, which is just a way of allocating um, workload between two different entities. You know, one's a server; it could do a lot. It's going to have the memory. It's going to have um, the sys administrator and all that kind of stuff. And here's a client out here that's kind of like a dumb terminal. Um, some things could be done intelligently there, but the system basically did not respect the full independence of the individual. It was so, no longer peer to peer. We it was weren't no, equals on the net. Well, somebody was the boss. net was still peer to peer, but the commercial web, and for that matter, the web was not. The, the there was web a became, hierarchy. It was, and, and it became a real estate system. We had we had locations with sites, domains right. that we that we right. visited and browsed, and and but 
we, what we did was we created a, a million or billion silos. You know, who you are to eBay is not who you are to Amazon, is not who you are to Google, is not who you are to Facebook. And, and, and there's no way that you can scale, okay? I, scale for you would be, or scale for me would be, you know what, I want to be able to change my address with all these guys. I want to have one policy for all these people. I want them to agree with my terms and my conditions, right? We actually have that. In, in the everyday world. I mean, we can walk out and, and relate with many people the same way. You know, we can introduce myself. I'm Leo. And, this is you know, how I am. This is how, how I is. am. And, and, deal. and people project who they are and how right. they are in the world. And that is, that is a free market. And that's how a free market works. We don't have a free market yet, in, in a fullest sense of the word, on the commercial web. What we have are a whole bunch of buildings where it's different for, all, for, for, for who you are and how you work is different in every one of them. So that needs to be fixed. That's why I wrote the book, by the way. We haven't gotten to the book yet. No. <laughs> Don't worry. you got plenty of time. We had, We're getting okay, to the good. book. i got three commercials. We're going to be here for hours. <laughs> Doc Fine. Searles is our guest. Uh, he is at, currently at the Harvard Berkman Center, which yeah. is an amazing uh, uh, place for scholars to think about these things. And some of the best minds have been there and are there right now. And yeah, it's, really it's a great a, place. It must be a fun place to work. Yeah. What is your mission statement at the Berkman Center? Well, so I... I uh, I, I went to Berkman as a fellow in 2006. You're a fellow. A fellow. Um, and a, um, fellowships generally run one year. Um, you're still there. They're more strict about it. No, I'm, I'm no longer a fellow. Oh, you're not but, there. Okay. But my project is still there. And so I'm still there got in the it. sense that the project is still I got there. It. And your project yeah. is what we're about to talk about. Yeah. After the commercial break. After <laughs> these words from our <laughs> fine sponsors. One of the things I think has changed a little bit, and, one, and I consciously did this, because I look back at those series catalogs, I said, that was a kind of an honest way to relate to a customer. These are our features and benefits. If you're interested, this is how you get it. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And, and I try to do our advertising like that. I think it's, a, it's treating, and I, and I tell our advertisers, treat our audience as peers. Mm -hmm. And don't try to trick them. Don't mm -hmm. coerce them. Say, here's what we do. Try it. If you like it, here's how you can buy it. That's all. Yeah. I like it a little bit better. But and you like your sponsors independently of Well, their... and that's part of the, what yeah. has to happen yeah. because otherwise I have to lie. Yeah. I can't, I can't and, do an ad. And you don't have this whole big thing here so you can lie. I, know, I did not build <laughs> you, this so I would yeah. have to lie to you. Were, yeah. <laughs> that would really have been dumb. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't. But that was how I used to have to do it, yeah. right? Right. So, because uh, you don't normally in broadcasting get to choose who you... F mm -hmm. f f you know, flog. Right. Here I flog only the people I like best. <laughs> and I'd like to flog stamps.com. Actually, this is a really good idea. Wouldn't it be cool if instead of going to the post office to buy stamps or your ATM or your grocery store, you could print them? <laughs> it sounds vaguely like it should be illegal. Like, yeah, no, no problem. I need a stamp. I'll just print it. But it's not. It's, in fact, the Postal Service, frankly, wants you to do this. Uh, that's why they give you discounts at stamps.com. You can't get at the post office. Twenty up to twenty one percent on express mail, up to uh, fifteen percent on priority mail. You never have to go to the post office. You know, uh, in the real world, when you're mailing a package more than thirteen ounces, you cannot put it in a mailbox. You have to bring it to the post office so they can look you over and see if you're a terrorist. Not with stamps.com. You can mail packages of any size. It's great for an Amazon seller and an eBay seller because it takes the data right from the page. The software churns out the right postage. You've got a, a USB scale, so you put the package on the scale and it says this is how much it is. Always up to date. You don't have to worry about price changes or anything. It is, it is absolutely, for a place like this or uh, somebody who sells online, or you know anybody who does a lot of mailing, this is the best way to go. And the best part is you don't even have to get up and bring the package to the post office. They come to you. You could schedule a free pickup. The mail carrier will come and get it. It is literally postage on demand, as needed. No more, no less. And I want you to try it right now. So, and we do this with all our sponsors too, and I really like it. Uh, we get we get a special deal for you. So, if you go to stamps.com and use the offer code triangulation promo code triangulation, <laughs> um, that eighty dollar no risk trial is now one hundred ten dollar no risk trial. You get fifty five dollars of postage coupons. The digital scale is yours to keep forever. You pay five dollars shipping and handling for that, and a one month trial free of stamps.com. So now you get to print your own postage, and you'll never go to the post office again unless you got a crush on that uh, nice lady at the counter. Other than that, you never have to go again. You don't have to focus on that. <laughs> go over the other side, the one with the great... Yeah, that's what they want to see. Not a 20-year-old picture of me. <laughs> Stamps.com. 
Offer code triangulation. Try it today. They are a very nice uh, sponsor. And uh, to your point, I used them for years before we did ask. I, I wondered if they also darkened your hair like it's <laughs> No, that's from the screensavers. That's back when you and yeah. I uh, were doing that show way back when on Tech TV. So the Clue Train mm-hmm. Manifest, before we get to the intention economy, your new yeah. book, um, kind of looking back at the Clue Train, were you right, wrong? Were, I mean, what, what, what's, what, what do you think 12 years later? I think I think we were right about everything, uh, in, including to some degree the hyperbole. There's, there's one line in there, I think it's uh, thesis number 74 or something, that says, give up on advertising, it doesn't work, forget about it, which, of course, you know. We are immune to advertising, just forget it. <laughs> so, what it was, it was an empowerment yeah. for the newly yeah. <laughs> wired, newly c- connected consumer yeah. saying, you know, screw you, don't try to... Yeah, sell us mm-hmm. power to the people. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, did, did we uh, win? I think we we're still fighting. Oh no, that no, battle. no, we haven't won that yeah. one. Um, and I don't think we're going to win it for a while, but I think we will. And, and I, I think what's what's going to happen. Actually, last night I, I I spoke in San Jose, and somebody came up with this point, which is, it isn't that power is going to shift from from sellers to buyers. It's that you know, sellers' power is here, buyers' power is here on the net, on the web as it stands now. It's like we're going to go up this much, and they're going to go up right. with it. And and it's more power on our side is going to mean more power for them as well. And we'll relate it it's as, good as for equals. Everybody. We'll, we'll relate as equals. As equals, yeah. exactly. Right. right. And that's kind with, of that. with full respect and no coercion and no, no manipulation. coercion. Just respect. Yeah. Um, we've got some ideas for you too. Some new tools we need. Some better service stuff we'd be willing to pay for. <laughs> Uh, it, it's just great. Don't worry, you can still make money. That is, as long as it's not the only thing on your mind. <laughs> your product broke? Why? We'd like to ask the guy who made it. Your corporate strategy makes no sense? We'd like to have a chat with your CEO. It's about conversations. It's about yeah. an open yeah. dialogue. <laughs> it's very hippie. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's interesting. Hippie. I mean, I, I, think, I think all three of us were... Two of us were over 50, and one of us was almost 50, and the other one was just a bit younger. So, So... And I think that was, you know, the, the work of several mature people who but it's right been around on. and saw it. So it was. If you think about Yelp and uh, and Amazon uh, reviews, I mean, mm. you go to Newegg and you don't buy something without seeing what thirty people thought of right. it first. Right. You can't get away with what yeah. you used to be able to get away with as a marketer or as a as a company. Right. And right. and this is interesting. So that that's progress. That's a form of progress. Huge and progress. We're due. Now, where we are have not made progress is you look at uh, initially one thought: oh, Twitter and Facebook is going to be a great opportunity for companies to communicate with their uh, Mm -hmm. customers. And initially, it kind of was. Comcast cares was responding to problems, right? right. But now it's really not that. It's more. It's but it's it's reverted. Yeah, these companies really want to be what they always were, which is just a big, you know, blah blah (laughs) blah. Buy our product. Buy our product. Buy our product. Right. Right. Yeah, well, you know, the, it's an advertising. They, they have giant flywheels of business as usual yes. that continue to spin. It's normal. And so do I. We all, all businesses. Do. Yeah, we all do. It's um, inertia. You know, companies have habits. Companies have inertia. And I have it, more sympathy because if you build a company to a business model, it's very hard to change the business model, and you know, and mm-hmm. survive because. Uh, Kodak's a good example. Oh my God. Kodak was very smart. I mean, they said digital's coming. We know it's coming. They bought Ophoto. They created digital photography. But there was a problem. Their business model was based on how much profit they made from ink, you know, printing and developing. It was very right. high profit. Yeah. So and then nothing replaced yeah. that. So substitute uh, the name Google for Kodak okay. and substitute advertising for what Got it. brought. Kodak profit. Now the difference is Kodak was much much older, right. and much less plugged into the world than Google is. But it's going to be hard for Google to change from an, a, a a company that lives off of advertising. It's built yeah. on that model. So I mean, I, but I, what I, replaces advertising? I mean, I'm having a hard time thinking. Charge people for stuff. It's charge, okay to charge people. Absolutely, charge them. Charge them for Gmail. Charge them for Google um, Earth. You know, charge them for. They actually no, had, there was an, a premium version. I think. An anecdote. Yeah. Uh, when I started uh, Twit, I thought, I don't want to have to have ads. I want to have a direct relationship with my audience. You pay me for the mm-hmm. product, and we'll give you the <clears> product. <throat> and for the first two years, we said, donate. And I think public broadcasting knows this as well. Mm-hmm. Fewer than, in my case, it was, public broadcasting claims 4%. In my case, it's it was like 1%. 10. Really? Yeah. I, I think the reason of is... listeners because, yeah. donated. The reason is because it's hard. It, it should be real easy. It should ah. be very easy to do that. So if the system were simpler, yeah, 
And that's uh, one of the things we've been working on. Is I do believe I do simple. believe that most it, people it, understand the say. relationship between <clears throat> something they consume and paying for it, and it costs something to make. And we and and have goodwill enough if you're a good company to yeah. pay for what you well, get. I, I think that this is something that's come to me recently, but I think it's true, which is that data wants to be free, but value wants to be paid for. And right, there's and, boy, that's important. Yeah, value wants to be if it has value. It doesn't mean everybody, it has, to, it has to be paid for, but it wants to be paid for. In the same way that data wants to be free. Right. Data wants to be duplicated. You know, you, right. you, you don't send me an email, you copy me an email, right. right? So data effervesces that way. That's what data wants to do. In a similar way, I think value, if something's valuable, there should be a way to pay for it. And making that easy and scalable means you don't start with an intermediary system. You start with something that's easy for the user, easy for the customer, easy to turn a consumer into a customer. I'm scared though, Doc. I, I would I'm, love. I'm to, not saying substitute what you've got. You're I would love to do that. Yeah. I would love to. I mean, I've fantasized mm. monthly about saying, okay, we're just not going to do ads anymore. And if you guys like what we're doing, just send us a buck or two. Yeah. It's, so <laughs> I think I'd be turning out the lights in three months. Well, it, 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 there are not the the protocols and conventions. So in I'll a, wait a little bit. I got so, time. Like, like right now, you can't go to Starbucks without paying somebody an extra right. 50, 50 cents or something There's like no that. way to do it. Because it's so normative to That's do that. That's how it does it. Yeah. Right. You don't expect a free cup of coffee. Right. Well, it's not just that. I mean, you tip them. Oh, that's you right. You give them additional value. Right. So yeah. that's expected, and there's a, there's a convention around that. We don't have this convention yet, but all we need is some tech and some protocol and some code. And Are you working on this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not, but the people Somebody I'm encouraged is. to work on it. Yeah, a bunch of companies. Well, let's talk about uh, the... Uh, so, so markets are conversations. We're working on the equality mm -hmm. of the consumer with the producer. Yeah. Um, good. All this mm -hmm. is good. Good progress. You were prescient. So how, what, what happened next? What, how did you change your gaze? Yeah. So, so what happened is that it, it, it turned out that writing alone did not change the future. <laughs> You know, there's one of my favorite books from way back was one by that Rollo May wrote about creativity, in which he said that writers alone, as creative types, suffer the illusion that the world really needs to hear what they have to say. A sculptor is not so burdened, but a, a writer thinks I the world needs to hear this, and it's going to change if I do that. Well, probably clue train changed some things. Um, you know, there. I mean, you could say Locke yeah. and Rousseau. I mean, there are people who writers. Yeah. Who have oh, absolutely. No, no, writers have had. Effects right. and, and and I'm not saying we did not have an effect. Right. I think we did. Carl have an Mars effect. was a writer. He wasn't. Uh, yeah, right. He was a historian right. and a writer. He wasn't a yeah, revolutionary. He, he got that done. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever that was, <laughs> or started, and then he was done, yeah. and then it was done later. Um, but but what happened in, in 2006 when I got the uh, the fellowship at Berkman? Um, when that happens, one is one is obliged to start a project, and and I thought, you know, why don't why don't I make a project out of fostering development. I, I wanted to do a development project where I'm not doing the development. I'm not a coder. The only code I know is Morse. Um, you know Morse code? I do. Yeah. Are you a ham? I was. I, wa I was in, back in the decade. <laughs> Welcome to the club, my friend. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, I yeah. became a ham only recently, and it, but, it, yeah. but it's very, become very clear that these were the prototypes for nerds. Oh, these are the original nerds. Well, it, it, you know, the, the ham bands are open. <laughs> it's open. It's open. The government yeah. said, all right, we're going to take all these frequencies. We'll leave a little bit mm -hmm. for you guys. Let's see what yeah. you can do. Yeah. And look what's happened. And maybe you didn't notice, but you see this oh, my the gosh. series, the emergency response, or it's the... Wow. Uh, the ARRL. Yeah. Amateur emergency Radio service. Emergency Service. Very good. I thought that was Apple's computer, but it turns out... No, the, the no. This is uh, not did. an Apple. <laughs> so are you a two-meter guy? or a, a I like, like the high-frequency bands. I like, it. Yeah. I like to go high. I like to go up. <laughs> and you, higher data-carrying capacities exactly. with those higher frequencies. None of this single sideband <laughs> stuff. Actually, FM's on two-meter, and it sounds better than, uh, than the, the high-frequency stuff. Yeah, sometimes. yeah, that's been there for, yeah. for a while. Yeah. Um, I, so I, interesting. So... Uh, yeah, so how do we get on that? Um, oh, uh, the only code I know is Morse. Well, so so <laughs> the new so Morse code. That's good. yeah. So so what? Um, so what I wanted to do is I already knew there was some development in in empowering individuals, but uh, I wanted to see more. So I basically have been encouraging that for the last six years. So you've been an open source advocate. I mean, yeah, at, at and the I'm Linux still Journal, I'm still I'm were. still an editor for Linux Journal. Right, right. I'm senior editor, which means I'm the oldest editor, um, <laughs> and um, and I write a column there. I've been doing that. 
in one way or another since 1996, I think. Wow. Um, That's a long time. But, but it was interesting. But I, I saw what open source communities could do. Yes. And, I, and, I, and it's you know, amazing. And yeah. it's altruistic, which is fascinating. Because we, I think, often have the mis- mistaken impression that people only act on their, kind of their best interest. And they, they're only interested in money. And here yeah. you have open source is this, is this wonderful thing where people do... St- I mean, they get rewards, they get acknowledgement or whatever, but it's essentially yeah. altruistic, isn't it? Well, it, I think it has altruistic effects. I'm not sure everybody goes into it for altruism. No, there's a variety of but, but Mostly they're trying to scratch an itch. You know? Yeah. But I, they, but, I need but, something but, to drive altruistic printers. Is, I need something to... You could scratch the yeah. itch and just keep it. What's altruistic is yeah. you said, I have did this, here, have it. Yeah, but you know that a lot, a lot, you know, as they say, as, as Eric Raymond says, you know, more eyes make bugs shallower, right? So, so there's a benefit. It's a, a totally practical benefit to yes. it, and and it really took off because of the net as well. You know, the the it's kind of the tr- an ultimate market. It is the a market. Yeah. In, in well, it, it's certainly part a very big part of the market at work. Yeah. But but I saw I saw how intentions could uh, how in effects could follow intentions. So for example. Um, a bunch of geeks, including Eric Raymond and Bruce Perrins, and um, uh, helped a great deal by, by uh, Tim O'Reilly here in town um, and others, um, got together in early 1998 and made a decision that we're going to talk about open source and not just free software. And that had an effect. That had an enormous effect. You can't get away from the words open source anymore. Yeah. And open source is universally used. That was an intentional effect of a bunch of geeks... Not writing code, but talking about code. And understanding the power of language. Yep. Yeah. And, and they knew that open would be, as, as vague as it is, it would be less ambiguous and easily than confused than free, yep. which meant price and freedom. Right. And it was confusing. Um, I'm tired of saying free is in beer versus free. Right. Well, because free most beer, in fact, is not free. <laughs> you know, it should be free as in air or yeah. free as in sunlight, you know, but free as in beer. So it's interesting. So they realized an idea can have power. Especially when expressed right. in powerful words. Right, right. And can make a movement, which right. they did. Right, So that's what I've been trying to do, too. So the movement is? Yeah. The, the movement is uh, VRM, which is, uh, of, stands for Vendor Relationship Management. Right. As opposed um, to Customer Relationship Management. Right, and, and it's actually, is, it, that term came up, it was not my term originally, it came up on a Gilmore gang, actually, when we were sitting around like here with a bunch of guys only virtually on, on, uh, in audio, and talking about my project when um, Mike Vizard, who's a, a writer, mm-hmm. um, said, oh, you're talking about uh, um, vendor relationship management. It's the customer side counterpart of, Love it. of customer relationship management. And it, it, it immediately took. And so rather than fight it and try to come up with a perfect term, which that isn't. I mean, you say vendor relationship management to most people and they're already yawning, you know. <laughs> but but, but it, did, it did have the intended effect of kind of... Um, Focusing the work around in the commercial sphere around empowering customers rather than uh, and 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 looking toward CRM as something we can work with and also fix because CRM by itself is one hand clapping or shaking right. or pointing at you or running a call right. center. Well, it kind of implies that we can manipulate and manage our customers, right? Right. Yeah. You know. Right. Oh, it's just a question of getting the customer to do what you want. That's all. And yeah. So you're about creating liberated, powerful, respected customers. Exactly. So yeah. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay. Doc Searles is our guest. Uh, where would you? CustomerCommons.org is the kind of the center for all of this. Yeah. Right. We we just we just uh, stood up CustomerCommons.org. You can see it. I there. like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, it's for the 100%. That's the tagline that's not there. Not the 99. But not the 99. The 100% of us that are, in fact, customers. And, that's a and, good point. Even marketers are customers. Yeah, right. Yeah. We're all customers. We right. all wear these two hats. And uh, if we have a wallet in our pocket or our purse, we're a customer, right? And, 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 and we, there are interests that we share in common that, we, that can help sellers. And part of the idea here is not to be... Not to be duplicative, say, of Consumer Reports, which is, what's wrong with this year's Ford? Right. You know, what's right, right with it? But rather, how can we help business? You know, how can we work together with wow, these guys? Wow, I really like this idea. And how can we help these guys out? It's a win-win. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's totally win-win. Yeah. And, and um, uh, so if you, if you have nothing but complaints, take them somewhere else. But if you have constructive things to talk about um, and how markets can be improved and business can be fixed or made better, um, this is the place to go. 
And we also want to uh, coordinate funding for, for development projects uh, that, that, that are more VRM development projects. We're going to so, talk about it, and uh, you can visit customercommons.org right now, but we'll talk about it in a bit. Doc Searles is our guest. This portion of the show brought to you by our friends at Citrix and go to assist. This is talking to the IT person out there, somebody who has to manage a lot of users. Uh, always a challenge. Uh, it is a tough uh, job, believe me, I know. They're pulling at you from every direction. And uh, this is a great tool for anybody who's in the IT business who wants to do two things. One, remote support. And you probably know GoToAssist is like kind of the premier, the leader in remote support. It is, in fact, uh, number one in market share and it has been around for 10 years. Really a great product. But they have added a new feature that I think is superb. It's remote monitoring. So they go hand in hand. Uh, if, you, if you set up GoToAssist and you put the crawler on your customer's network. Now you know all the hardware, all the software, all the software, all the attached peripherals, all the network resources, everything that's going on. You can set up alerts so you know proactively before it could be something simple like the, you know, the router cartridges, I mean the toner cartridge running out of ink or the or the hard drives full or it could be something like uh, the network is down or for some reason the Wi-Fi has really gotten slow. Don't wait till the customer calls you cuz you know, then it's a problem. Watch, listen, monitor, and then fix with the remote support. And, man, you've got a great, great team. That's what GoToAssist is all about. I want you to try it for 30 days free. Visit GoToAssist.com. You, if you click that Try It Free button, you'll see the promo code. You have to click a link there. So that you, you can fill that part out. But then, yeah, there in the promo code. And then triangulation. Triangulation as the promo code. That. You know, that just, it, that we don't get paid because you do that, but it just lets them know that they heard about it here and they do care about where they, you found out about it. So it would help us if you tell them. Go to assist.com. If you're in IT or in, you're in software support, this is the tool you've been looking for. You've got to try it. Monitoring and remote support together. Go to assist.com. Offer code triangulation. Already our chat room. Yeah, but watch. I'm now it's looking there. Over here. You it's see like, that? It's, uh, it's Traveler says, wow, it's an awesome <coughs> site. Customer Commons nonprofit for customers <coughs> who are tired of just complaining about the powers that be and want to contribute to making tools for the rest of us. So good job. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, no, that is, that is accurate. And, so um, tell me, kid, you got tools? Has anything come up? Well, no, this? they're if, actually it's brand go, new. We we don't we have like three tools listed on the site, but actually we're just migrating them over from oh, okay. Project VRM. If you go to projectvrm.org, you'll actually get to the the wiki. Follow the I mean to the uh, blog. But there, we have a wiki. give me an example of some of the tools. Okay, so there there are many tools already for that are in development for managing your data, um, called personal data stores or lockers or vaults or services or clouds. Um, where you have your own cloud of data, as it were. Oh, not a personal cloud. Oh, my cloud. Your cloud. Oh. Not it's Apple's cloud. It's your cloud. Oh. Um, so, so there's a Singly here in San Francisco. There's an open source project under that. That merges all your uh, disparate sources together. Uh, of, yeah. Of yeah. Uh, in their case, they're starting with social, but right. they can do much more than that. Underneath that is something called the Locker Project. It's open source. Um, there's in Washington D.C. There's uh, Personal.com. Um, in the UK, there's... Um, now, why do I yeah. want to do this? Well, in, in a way, you're, you already have a pile of data of your own. It just isn't that organized. It's on my hard drive. It's on your hard drive. You know? and, and most of it has use value, not sale value, by the way. So there's a lot of people who are thinking, oh, I can sell my data because mm. marketers... <clears throat> that's not interesting. Uh, but, yeah. the, but, they're, but combining some of these things, so to say your, your, um, uh, you know, your your medical history and your fitness history and your shopping history, your, your travels, these other things, which are all siloed for the most part right now. Or if you can, if, if Amazon and eBay and other sellers that you've, whose sites you've used are so kind as to let you have their, the data that you've accumulated. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? And it would be good for them too, because they don't know what you're doing when you're not shopping there. Right. So So what's their incentive? So were they, is there a trade for that information? I, I think that there, in the long run, there will be a, um, a benefit from from the customer side of having much better information. Oh, I can from see that. Why would Amazon help me? I think because they know that they don't know everything about you. You know, they're you know they. So they're going to get. I'm going to give them some. Uh, well, no, something, I mean something it, for giving oh, me oh, my okay. information. So back? let's say, let's <laughs> say. I mean, right now, I mean, I'll take my own case. I, I don't only buy books from Amazon. Right. Okay. 
Amazon's often trying to sell me books they already bought from somewhere that's else. That's true. In fact, they're often selling, trying to sell me books I've already bought from them. Yeah, they that's basically but their bad recommendation. That's, it recommends everything you already bought. That, that, that's a problem. <laughs> so, so, I mean, but, but aside from that, I, I, you know, I would like, if I have an inventory of books that I already have, which, yeah. you know, to some degree I have, because I put yeah. a bibliography in a book that I just came out with, um, uh, I would be glad to share that with them. You know, well, that's why they I, bought. Shelf, isn't to, that why they bought? Uh, what was it? A saf, uh, safari or Shelfari or whatever? Um, they bought like a Goodreads type social book network. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're hoping that you will give them that information. The, the thing is that it, I it, wish it populated it from I, your Amazon account. It well, doesn't. Yeah, of course. See, the, the problem is that all these silos get big, and they have these big old systems that are right. only theirs. And even a company as good as Amazon, which is about as good as they get, and at that size, I think, at doing. IT well, I would imagine. But the, the, the problem is it's still a silo. And federating silos is not as good as having individuals giving you good information. Of well, let's own. use a concrete example. You have a yeah. blog post a couple of months ago. Let's, let's fix the rental car business. Right. Yeah. Is that a data problem? Oh, what's boy. wrong with the rental car? I a bunch of different things. Yeah, I, I took one particular example. Um, well, what's, uh, there are many things wrong with the rental car system. One is that they're a confusopoly, right? You don't know what <laughs> the prices really are. That's the Dilbert are. term. That's the Dilbert term. You know, that's, that's Scott Adams' term. Um, uh, airlines are the same way. They don't they, want they you to know. Way. They don't want you to know. Because the guy sitting next to you yeah. may have paid, two, uh, Ozzie paid $200 less for yeah. his ticket. Right. And he, they don't want you to know that because you'll get, well, wait a minute. Right. Yeah, I, I think uh, Dave Barry talked about, you know, Mickey the fair chicken that does nothing but peck <laughs> yeah, on the keyboard. It's random. And come, up with, come up with random fares for everybody. It's not random. In fact, it's one of the reasons the airlines yeah. survive is because they're very efficient at pricing and filling. You know, you don't have empty seats right. anymore on airplanes. So, so, But how can I participate with, that, with, with these companies and make it better for them? I, I understand. I think, I think it makes it, you can make it better for them by not being... A template, not being a mass market, because because that's what they're looking at right now. Oh, I am not oh, you're, a template. Yeah, you're not a template, but they want you to be a template. You want to, they want you to look like a template, no matter how personal they are with you. Well, you can understand you know? why. It's a lot easier to deal with a million customers if they're templates. Exactly, than if they're humans. and that's and that's mass market thinking, and that's right. as far as you can get with. The, but technology lets us be better than that. Is it that should. The point? It should. Yeah, it should be better. And and if the technology is informed by what we really want, you know, so so. I mean, I mean, I, I can't even begin to say how many ways that the that the rental car business right now is strange. We rented two cars this last week, one in Southern California and one here. In both cases, we rented the cheapest car. We rented the economy car. And they in both cases, two different ones. One was Dollar, the other was Alamo. They send you out to the lot and say, pick one from that row. In the first case, it was a choice between a a grand marquee, like a, you know, a limo car, or a van, a Kia van. We took the van, right? That was our. That almost always. That was our economy car. You never get right. The, the next one that we rented, the cheapest car, was in fact a van, and so we're driving up here. We drove a a like a, a Ford a Econo line. No, a Chrysler Town and Country. <laughs> it's got it's got the radar backing up. It's got the. That's all it's right. It's got satellite radios. It's wonder. It's, it's actually a very nice vehicle. But, but there's probably a model where they say, "Well, we aren't renting this car, so we'll give it to Doc." Well, I I think very often, yeah, it could be, and, and that actually might <laughs> be, like that might be part of their. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to hear, Doc. He'll ride hear, anything. Yeah, yeah, that's probably. Well, I think I think what they're saying is, we we can ups we'll, we'll upsell the suckers, right? And everybody else will get a random car. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think that's where I think that's where it's at now. And I think in part that's because when I started writing about the rental car business in 2006, my joke was, and it wasn't too much of a joke. It was a fact. It didn't it didn't matter what car you rented. You would always get the or similar, right? The or similar. Yeah. Somebody ought to make a car called the or similar, or similar right? Yeah. And which was always a Chevy Cavalier. So it didn't matter what you wanted to rent. You were going to get a Chevy Cavalier, a car that existed only in the rental universe. <laughs> right. Nobody would buy one. No. And later it was a Chevy Cobalt. Right. And for a while it was the PT Cruiser. You couldn't yeah. get away. You had to rent PT Cruisers because <laughs> Chrysler dumped all their PT Cruisers on the rental car business. <laughs> And I've spoken to people in the rental car business who say, you have no idea how much the car makers hate us because oh, really? we cheapen every car that we that right. you possibly Oh, yeah, it's the last thing you and want. And so, yeah. so there's a kind of a, a like-hate relationship going on there. But, but aren't but, these companies better yeah. run because they have data, they're big data, they're very good at now business intelligence and in analyzing everything. And so they have figured it out, just as the airlines have figured out how not to have an empty seat. They have figured out how to maximize the value of their inventory, and if it means making you drive around in a Chrysler town and country, so, so be, be it. it. Yes, that's that's their thinking, 
And I think well, what's that, wrong with that? That's a good business. N- nothing's wrong with it except it could be better. <laughs> I mean, it sucks for you. Yeah, yeah, but... it sucks. It, well, it doesn't suck for me at all. But it, 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 you know, I mean, there was nothing wrong with mainframes. You know, they, they worked right. fine. But they we were, could, and we they could worked, do better. And they worked fine. So this is a really critical part. The, they worked fine for companies. And, and, and what everybody thought was, you know, we don't want to give people computation power. Why would they ever, need, why would an individual need computing, for right. God's sakes? And so the PC comes along. And that cat is out of the bag, and those horses are out of the barn, and we'll never be the same again. We have computing power. Then along came the Internet, and suddenly we all have communication power like that is not going back in the bag again. Well, why would anybody want a worldwide network? Who would want that? Right. Well, it happened, and now we have it. We can't right. go along without it. Right. And then we have... So this is where innovation comes from. And, and, now we, and now we have it on our phones. But it's not, we're not all the way there yet where yeah. we have the full power of the network and of the computation, where we can take the lead. It's where what's happening on the on the computer. The o- Ozzy's leaving. Ozzy's leaving. His- Don't you care <laughs> about this, Ozzy? Wouldn't you like a better world for dogs? <laughs> No, he says, I'm done. No, you he guys, says, I'm done. You don't you have any roast beef, I'm are, leaving. His boredom radar went off, and he's saying, you <laughs> know, It's I'm, like all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm out of here. Do I'm you done. have your book? Do you, did you bring a copy? I did not bring a copy of the I book. I don't have so, a copy either. Uh, there we go. We'll just so, have to imagine it. You just have to imagine it. Just if, go you, to, if you go to Amazon, you can find it. Yeah. Intention. Buy it from the... the it, there it is. You get more money if you buy... Doc gets more money if you buy it from his website, I bet you. No, not at all. No, it's... You don't care. Um... I, well, I do. I, I care a little, but you, there's only one seller left, and it's Amazon, pretty much. And it so is amazing. It is it? amazing. They're they're a virtual monopoly at this point, I think, or close to it. That's a that is a kind of a yeah. negative consequence of the efficiencies that these retailers, uh, and particularly online retailers, have. Is yeah. that they are driving everybody else out of business, and they're and it almost feels like there'll be one big person in every category. I, I think that's a, a a temporary consequence of where we are now. Um, but I think that'll change. There will be diversity, you think, in the long run? Yeah, I, th- I, I think we go back and forth. I think, you know, right. Amazon's proving a whole bunch of stuff, but... They are. None of these are trees that grow to the sky. They, okay. You know, no company lives forever. It's a really good message from the old timers. Yeah. yeah. Nothing lasts forever, kids. <laughs> oh, he's back. It's, I guess we got him back. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking to Doc Searles. Yeah, do I converse with John Perry Barlow? Like Once a, in a while. John, yeah, yeah, you and John seem like you'd get along pretty yeah, well. Yeah, we get along. Yeah. But I, I've, I've, last I saw him was at a Berkman event a few years yeah. ago, but I do yeah. read him from time to time. Yeah. He's great. We're very fortunate. They're great thinkers, uh, and the Internet has given them uh, a chance to have a voice and to talk to us, and, uh, and Doc Searles absolutely is one of them. I want to talk about what the intention economy is, though. We haven't gotten into it yet, and we're going to do that in a second. Uh, and we are running a little bit late. If you're uh, tuning yeah. in for This Week in Radio Tech, stay tuned. We're going to get there. The hair of Kirk. <laughs> He's got the best yeah. hair. He's a we television do, we do weatherman. Have an eight twenty flight out of SFO. Oh, well, we'll wrap know. this up. Let me just so, talk about Ford. Yeah. Ford, Ford, Ford. <laughs> Great car, wonderful. Get it. And if you can rent it, rent it. But they probably won't rent you the twenty twelve Ford Focus Electric. I bet you that's not in the rental fleet. But you should buy one because a, it's really a cool car. It is like a consumer electronic device. This is this car. They have a, a, an app. There's an app for this car. It's called the My Ford Mobile app that lets you do things like. Pre- tell the car when to charge from your living room. In fact, if you press a button in the app, it's got this value charging feature. Uh, Microsoft created this that, that gets all the data from the utilities via an API, and then, the, and then they use that data to tell your car when to charge at the lowest possible rate. The app saves you money. It also tells you where the charging stations are as you drive about. It also tells you, it pre-conditions pre- uh, your your uh, car so it's 72 degrees exactly when you're going to get in it you know or so that whether heating or cooling because you want to do that while you're plugged in it'll tell you as you drive uh, on your screen on your app uh, where the status the status of the battery is all of that stuff and they have a great website a forum where you can learn uh, techniques and, and share uh, information about your hot new 2012 Ford Focus uh, they even have this is modern I'll ask you about this gamification where you mm. can see if you how who saved the most CO2 today. <laughs> Isn't that a great wow. way to encourage people to drive in an eco-friendly way, <laughs> make you a winner because you save more CO2 and, incidentally, a lot of money at the same time. I want you to check it out. Ford.com slash technology is the site we're looking at, but you can also 
and this would be a good idea, go to, as I did it, and it's really fun, go to your local Ford EV certified Ford dealer and say, I want to drive the 2012 Ford Focus. And you know what? Bring your phone because the app, Android, BlackBerry, or iPhone, they'll put the app on there and you can actually see it work as you drive around. It's so cool. Ford.com slash technology. We thank them for their support. They're an interesting company because the, this is a 110-year-old company yeah. that has stayed relevant in the 21st century by recognizing the power of consumer electronics. By They have a Silicon Valley. They have an API to the car's computer. Yeah, yeah. It's really... You, an, an interesting fact about my writing about um, rental cars over the years, not, not that frequently, but in, with passion when I have is that the only car I've talked up is the Ford Focus. Though it was years ago, it's because they were the only ones that had an MP3 player. Right. And I would record podcasts. Right. Yours among others. And yes. I would put them, I would burn them onto an MP3 CD, and when I drove between Santa Barbara and San Francisco over and over again, I'd listen to those. And if I could rent a Focus, I would do that. Well, you know what's interesting? I, 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 I talked to them a couple of days ago. The, they had an event in Silicon Valley, and the CTO was there. And he said, we're trying to think of the car as a platform just like a Windows is a platform, where we put the sensors in the car, the control features in the car. We don't know what people are going to do in a few years. We put all the features in there, and then we provide an API, and we let developers develop for the platform, just as you would for an operating yeah. system. Because as we've learned in technology, you don't know how people are going to use this yeah. until you right. let them have it and start doing stuff with it. Mm -hmm. And they, the car is a durable good. It's going to last 10 years. Yeah. You cannot plan for what people are going to be doing down the road. Yeah. So you make a platform, and it's, it's I think, it's incredibly smart. Yeah. They're yeah. really, yeah. They, they understand. Look, yeah, it's, I, I've, I'd, I'd like to check that out. Yeah. You talk me into checking it out. Good. good. Yeah, the new one. Oh, the <laughs> sync is great. So uh, tell me what the intent, I don't understand what an intention economy, why intention? What does that in, mean? Intention is based on on what you actually want, okay, and, and what you, intention is, is the capacity you have to have what's called the agency in the original meaning of the word in the world, the power to have effects. Okay, so, right. so what we've had... So it's, very, it's almost Buddhist. I, I have my well, intention. Well, yeah, I put I know. It in the universe. It is not the best title for the book. Unfortunately, this one we've got. But the... the <laughs> no, I like it. Yeah, but it sounds like attention, and it's actually... It's not attention. But it's not. But, we, and, but it's posed against that, because what we've had in some ways, especially on the net for the last few years, yes. is an attention economy. Right. It's, it's like we're want, we want your attention all the time. Yeah, Steve Kilmore's talked a lot pay, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Right. Um, and and what, we, you know, what, we, what we need is an economy that's built around what we intend to do as customers in the marketplace, rather than just be guessed at, rather than be told what you want. So the, 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 this is a little bit off... We need to send signals about what we exactly. want. Exactly, it's it's about sending signals. So what happens when the si right now we are we are just bathed and buried in signals coming from the sell side, and the few signals we can send are different for every one of the sellers, and they're only the ones they're willing to listen to. So what happens when we can we can become the points of integration for our own data and the points of origination for our intentions in the world? Now the intention might be, I I don't know enough about Canon cameras. Tell me more, which would invite advertising perhaps. Um, but it might be, look, Amazon and everybody else, I have these Canon lenses already, and I have right. these Canon so cameras don't already. don't bug me. But and, and I'm interested in buying these lenses when the prices are X. Right. And, oh, by the way, I've actually already parked the money to pay for those Ooh. over here. So we're working with banking people on this one, for example. So this is yeah. recasting tracking cookies, which is them trying to figure out Right. In a very indirect way, what our intentions are. Right. And us taking control of it and saying, no, no, wait a minute, I'll tell you. Yeah. Give me a way to do this that works. Yeah. Is well, that it? Yes, but, but it, it yes it, it is. But here's here's and if, and if by the way, if somebody doesn't want to share that, they don't have to. Of course, yeah. But there's value to doing it, right? The, 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 there's value to being a fully empowered actor in the marketplace. Yes, and the marketplace is rigged, so we're not right now. Right. And so, you know, as long as as long as we're slaves to all these different companies in in all these different ways, right? Um, it's not going to work at full efficiency, and and guessing at us is not working very well, and. Uh, That's, by the way, the bottom line that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody these, wants to talk about bad. These targeted ads actually don't work. Right. Period. Right. Yeah, I know. So it's a failed system. Well, it does not failed in the sense that Google and the others are yet. making are making they are making money on it. But how they much? don't want anybody to know that it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, so so he, here's here's how bad the assumptions are behind what's going on there now. 
they think that they know, they can have perfect knowledge about what you're going to do next. We have IBM selling big data right now. Go to the IBM site, one of the first things you'll see is, of, you know, the new chief executive customer. I wrote a blog post about this yesterday. You know, we, we love the chief executive customer. She's driving everything right now. Well, she has no sense of doing that, right? And IBM's just selling some data thing, right? right. But, but the, they're halfway there. But where they jump to is, well, well, we have a million points of data on everybody. Therefore, we can know right. what's... Well, I don't want to get too far into philosophy, but I majored in it. Laplace said this 200 years ago. If a devil could know everything in the, in the universe where everything is at any point in time, they could predict the rest of everything, and therefore predestination must exist. The problem is quantum mechanics doesn't allow that, and there is randomness to the world. There's the an universe, uncertainty. And there's you know, laws of thermodynamics right. and a million other things, and uncertainty prevails. And so... Yeah, and Heisenberg came along and talked about uncertainty. Well, what, what, um, think about any bad relationship you've ever had. One thing would characterize Can I not? it. All, I know, we don't want to, but here, here's the one that would always set you off. Yeah. I don't need to talk to you. I already know what you're thinking. I know what you're going to say. You know, we don't really need to talk. I know what you're going to say. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's the worst thing you could say. That is the attention economy right now. It is Google saying... Don't tell me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I know what, I know what, I know what you want. I've seen where you've been. I know what you want. You don't have to tell me anything. <laughs> we'll tell you what you need. That's, I love it. That's what's wrong with that. And it is so broken. And you're it's just like, saying, it, uh, you, let me tell you. You, you. you don't even have a relationship at the point you already have grounds for divorce. <laughs> because so I'm going to break up it. Google. Yeah, well, I can't. Unfortunately, we can't. It'll, so it'll, let's convince them be there's fine. a better way. So it, it, We're going to go into. Uh, I, I don't therapy think they've together. ever been fully comfortable with it. The problem is they're making money at it. That's so the problem, and it's very yeah. hard to wean somebody off. Right. Exactly. Somebody said it was a good quote, and I wish I could remember who said. I think it was uh, uh, Fred Wilson. He said the three most uh, addictive things in the world are heroin, carbohydrates, and a monthly paycheck. So oh, yeah, right. yeah, right. As soon as you yeah. get anything back, you're gonna go. I like this. I'm gonna do more of it, even yeah. if it's not the best way to do it. Yeah, I love it. So everybody, so Google, read the intention economy, <laughs> and let's get the customers in charge because it's better for you and it's better for us too. And I'm gonna read it too. And I really thank you for your time. I know you have to get to the airport, so we'll cut it off there. Great. But that's great. I appreciate Doc. it. It's so nice Thanks to see you. It's Come wonderful back to be again here. Great to see the whole space. Yeah, we're very I've proud of this. I've seen that little section over there and this one over here. Yeah, but now you see it. In, now here we am. You know, now you see the rafters. In the, in the seat. And the dog. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. It's good. Thank you. Go uh, to Doc's uh, website. Get the book, Intention Economy, and then go to Doc's website, customercommons.org, and read up and on the empowered website. consumer. So, Everybody's. It's not yeah. just his. It's yours. That's good. That's what a marketers say when they want yeah. to buy It's not that. It's me. It's you. This is you. I'm telling you what you want. You know you do. Thank you, Doc. It's great Thank to see you. you. Thanks for joining us. We do try and guess. Tom will be here sometimes, sometimes not. He's, he's got lots of other projects. And so he said, would you mind once in a while? Doing? And I said, me? No, I love it. This is a great chance for me to just talk without interruption. So uh, thank you, Tom, for taking some time off. But Tom Eric, we'll be back. We have some great guests planned for you going forward, including... The ultimate marketer, the guy who created the pet rock, Nolan Bushnell, did some other stuff after that, like Atari. But anyway, we'll, we'll talk to Nolan and see what he's up to. That's coming up in a future triangulation. We do this show uh, every single uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. When did, what day is today? Wednesday. Wednesday, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> At 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 2300 UTC. See, I can do math in my head, but I don't even know what day it is. That's me right there in a nutshell. Uh, please tune in and watch live. And you were talking about Rolling Your Old Cloud. Actually, we've got a show coming up called Know How with Ayaz Akhtar. Mm -hmm. Show one is going to be Make Your Own Cloud. Cool. Don't use theirs. Use yours. Make Your Own Cloud. Who, who's doing that? It's one of our hosts, Ayaz. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, we and he's going to do it with him. me. He's Would you? Good. Is yeah. Ayaz still here? He's doing no, in then. That's what that is. Is it's, it really? It has to be. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, we're going to talk about the hardware, but the, I Doesn't think that, matter. yeah. Yeah. We talk about the Freedom Box. The Freedom Box. Yeah. I'll tell him. Okay. But Good. that's going to be episode one of Know How, and it'll be in, uh, in early July we're going to be doing that. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next time on Triangulation.